want to do what is loving and caring. They should oh. But I have a spiritual life. Where did they have, I take, it was also a simplicity about a hand. If you take away the spiritual value of it, just saying this um, is a uniform, everyday kind of a, a, of a situation. Okay. And it, to live in a, in a much more simple I think they saw style. us as somebody who yes. represented the church, uh, we represented um, some kind of moral values, and you no uh, longer wear that habit. Who are I believe you that how are you acting? That says something to people. Set Apart is a series about experiencing the habit as women religious. Brought to you by Sister Story, an organization aimed at broadening awareness of Catholic sisters and sponsored by the Conrad Hilton Foundation. You're listening to the episode Nondescript Habiters, featuring three sisters who stand out through their actions rather than their attire. Sister Susan Borel, Sister Catherine Schoenecker, and Sister Laverne Hudala are all sisters of St. Paul's Monastery, the Benedictine Palace in St. Paul, Minnesota. They were born into Catholic families and have all been sisters for 60 years. Together, they discuss their roles as sisters before and after wearing the habit. So we wore a habit until the 60s, and we started changing gradually. It was, you could shorten your skirt, but you're supposed to wear black or white or blue. <laughs> I remember that. Shortened our veils, and pretty soon, Everybody was wearing lots of things. <laughs> <laughs> Washed it and pressed it, and from there we cut out our, our new veils. And then we started, as Laverne said, with our, our veil, some of the hair showing. Mm -hmm. And we had to, if, as we made different designs, as you're in, we had to come before a group of sisters and have it approved. And I can remember wearing a medal, and it had a leather, leather uh, strap. Sister, the artist sister said, oh, that's introducing a new medium. It wasn't a chain, it was a leather oh. strap. <laughs> yeah, we were really on wow. our own. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I mean, so you, but you obviously, you both well, we could get a nice jumper pattern. We could get okay, pattern. okay, we, so you could go and get a pattern. We didn't, yeah. did you all, did you always have black? I have to ask no. him this, it wasn't with them. We could have I blue. did for a short okay. time and it didn't last long. Black mm -hmm. Okay. I don't think I ever wore a jumper. I didn't either. I always felt I was never clean because you were dragging that a surge. You didn't wash it every other day. Um, it was it was an attractive habit though. Uh, in winter time it was fine, but in summer it was very warm. I think the change was um, so gradual for us. As I said, we first did something to the headdress, and that was a welcome thing okay. to get rid of the coif from the band and that. And then for going from the long, full-length habit to a modern clothes and we were told after Vatican II that the, originally the sisters dressed as the local women did and they did dress like that. If you see artists photos of, of women they were all covered up and so I think we felt more comfortable at least I did to uh, adjust to the change it wasn't hard. Uh, sometimes now I think how, how simple that was how easy instead of having to decide what am I going to wear today. Right. <laughs> And giving me suggestions about what to wear and how to wear it and what not to wear it. It was really interesting because they would never have done that in the past, but they knew we were all trying to adjust to how people dressed. I think I was more self-conscious about it, and I think the hair was a biggie for me. Because most people didn't know what we looked like if we didn't have the, the veil on. Do they have hair? And children would, but yeah, that, that was difficult. I think they even helped a lot of sisters sew their clothes. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes you had... Um, hairdressers in your community and they would they helped us with haircuts and so that that helped with the adjustment but I didn't find it difficult to adjust at all I was I welcomed it and when I went home I would I came from a very Catholic town and so I I was kind of held up you know as mm -hmm. and some girls um, did enter later on and they said that they were so happy that I could come home and be in their midst. Right. But the fact that we don't wear it any longer means that we have to be more of what we're, we're trying to convey instead of dressing like that. I think they saw us as somebody who represented the church, represented um, some kind of moral values, and when you no longer wear that habit, who are you and what are you, how are you acting and, and what are you doing? So what factors influenced your choice of wearing or not wearing the habit? 
comfort. <laughs> comfort. Comfort in the, the heat and all of that, yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. the direction from the church, really, mm -hmm. that we should mm -hmm. um, dress according to the times. Mm -hmm. We weren't so separate from people. Okay. Some held on a long time, uh, continuing to wear the habit, the coif mm -hmm. and all, all that, and finally, uh, either those sisters died or they gradually changed. Okay. And we weren't forced in either way. You have to or you don't have to. Okay. Yeah, we, we have to be where, where the needs of the church. And so many of us are elderly <coughs> and not able to do that anymore. But I think if you talk about women religious in general, that would be my um, observation. Okay. And I think working in the church, you know, being ministers in the church and like we have some the sisters, Lauren goes over to Tubman there and helps the children there with their homework and everything. Okay. That's working with the poor working and their peace mm -hmm. and justice. Mm -hmm. We have a sister that does ministry, in the prison ministry. And we are countercultural, and, and it's, I think it's important for people to see what that means in this culture where everything mm -hmm. is moving fast and, and hooked up electronically. And, Absolutely. The young people need more of a home environment, support from other people and so forth. And I think a lot of them are not getting it. Mm -hmm. um, and help them. I know they want to be out there to help the poor and, you know, be out there. Right. And they could get that. If they're religious, you know, mm -hmm. it could be their work and so forth. It's Young people mm -hmm. in, in this era seem to be searching, and uh, this is a place where they can search and might find what they what it is they it's going to fulfill their lives for them. Thank you for listening to Set Apart, a series about experiencing the habit as women religious. Brought to you by Sister Story. Special thanks to the Conrad Hilton Foundation for their support. Interviews were conducted by Brianna Bruner, Tron Nijong, and Alexa White. Music is from Free Music Archive and the record label American Residue Records. This series has been produced by me, Lily Jacobson, with additional support and guidance provided by Garrett Tiedemann and Alicia Byer. Please connect with us at sisterstory.org. Check out our video content on Vimeo and YouTube. Like us on Facebook and follow Sister Story on Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram. Planning any events for National Catholic Sisters Week, March 8th through 14th? Connect with us at nationalcatholicsistersweek.org and submit your events for post and promotion. We look forward to hearing from you soon.